Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 75. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 8 or the PDFs, I mean the PowerPoints for chapter 8, click on the link directly below the video and scroll down to the Excel Finance class section. Now we've been talking about IRR, internal rate of return and the net present value. And we're looking at two situations where the internal rate of return may give you the wrong answer. We looked at non-conventional cash flows last video. Now this video we want to talk about mutually exclusive projects. Now, so far in this uh, chapter we've asked the question, should we invest dollars in project A? But what if we ask, should we invest our dollars in project A or B, right? And if they're mutually exclusive projects, that means if you choose one, you can't choose the other, we're going to run into trouble. Example, you can choose investment A or B, but not both. I always think of mutually exclusive. Yes, it's not both. I always think of it as dating only one person, right? You can have date this person to that person, but not both. All right, uh, mutually exclusive projects. We're going to go over and calculate, make some calculations, both IRR and NPV for these two projects. And then we're going to see that there is a problem. And then we're going to plot it on a chart. And hopefully the chart, which is a picture, will say a thousand words and explain clearly why there is a problem. All right, I'm going to do IRR. Awesome function. You highlight cash flows zero all the way to the end, and that's it. So I get 2, 2, and I'm going to increase the uh, decimal, and then I'm going to drag this over. Notice uh, it's looking at the right cash flows there. And now I'm going to calculate net present value equals net present value. The rate now. Here's the important thing about all this. Really, when you're looking at a project, it is the required rate of return inside the firm, inside the business. They have determined that this is the rate they require. And that's the most important rate here, um, <coughs> not necessarily IRR. All right, so we uh, have our rate, our value. As we know from studying the net present value function, it's cash flows at time one and future and later. Close parentheses, and then you add the negative up here. And that'll give us the net present value. Ooh, look at that, all these decimals again. Now I'm going to drag this over. And there's the problem. This given, they, these are giving us conflicting um, decisions. With IRR, we should select Project A. With NPV, we should select Project B. Now the, the whole crux of this matter is, it really, the required return is what we need to be looking at, so we should be uh, using the net present value. When you have mutually exclusive projects, forget it. Don't use IRR. Now let's just see, and here we get a conflict, but let's change the uh, required rate of return to 17, right? Still, we get the, the same, did I do something wrong? Oh yes, I did do something wrong here. Um, I'm going to scoop, oh, I'll see what I did wrong was uh, the net present value. So that, I should have noticed that before, that's actually the sum. If I go over here and go Alt equals, right there, that's actually the sum of all of the cash flows. And the reason why is I didn't lock that cell reference right there. So watch this, I'm going to click and drag this over. There's the 17%. Right? That was a zero rate, so it was calculating net present value to zero rate. So here we don't get a conflict. At 17%, IRR and NPV give us the correct answer, which is A. So deciding whether you are going to take this project here or that series of cash flows A or cash flows B is dependent on the risk of the project, which is included in your required return. So at 10% we get a conflict, at 17% we don't. We better plot this and see what's going on. But bottom line is, use NPV and you don't get into trouble.
in both cases, NPV gave us the correct answer. The value added to the firm was greater in both situations. All right, uh, let's go ahead and plot the net present value for A and B, and then uh, look at the chart, and hopefully that will help us figure out this mutually exclusive project situation. All right, I'm going hi to um, highlight that uh, required rate, comma, the values. This is for A. one to four, not zero, and I'm going to hit the F4 key, and then I'm going to add times zero, which is a negative, and I'm going to hit the F4 key. Let's see, I think I got it right. Control Enter, and I'm going to double click and send it down. All right. Now let's do the same thing over here, equals net present value. I'm going to say at that rate, comma, with these values here, F4, comma, close parentheses, plus that one and hit the F4. All right, that's looking good. Double click and send it down. The first thing you can notice for sure is um, at zero rate, that's just the total of all the cash flows, right? So this one has uh, 3,050, this one has 3,550. So the cash flows, the actual total cash flows here are greater. But let's go ahead and plot this and see if we can figure out what's going on here. Now I'm going to highlight the whole table and what's great about the XY scatter is this is an X, it'll interpret this as Y1 and this as Y2. So I'm going to go up to insert. We're doing a scatter because this is the X, these are the Y's. Two numbers. So anytime you have two numbers and you want to uh, have a line, you go scatter and then that one right there. And there it is. We can see what's going on here. Of course, at the cash flows are different, right? So because the cash flows are different, we're going to have a different net present value profile line. And the IRR, that's the internal rate of return, boom, boom. It's just the intersection. That's the internal rate for these particular cash flows. It's not the required rate that the business is looking at. So those are just that value and that value right there. We can see. Here's the, the crossover point, and we'll figure out what that is in just a moment. Everything this direction, you would pick B, right? But everything, there's the crossover. Everything this direction, you're going to select A, right? Now I am going to clean this up a little bit here. I definitely want to add some labels. Always going to have a good chart. I'll do the vertical one. And this will be net present value, enter, and then back to axis, and this will be horizontal. And this is RRR, enter. I'm going to uh, hi highlight that in Control-1, put it at the top. You could also right click. All right, so that crossover rate right there tells us everything on this side over here. We're going to go with the net present value for B. Everything on this side, we're going to go with the net present value for A, that blue line here. right? But anytime you have mutually exclusive projects like this, you're not going to go with IRR. You're going to go with uh, NPV. Let's go ahead and calculate that crossover rate. And the way you do that is you calculate the difference between the two projects' cash flows, and then do an IRR on that. Now you can subtract these in either order, this from that or that from that. Double click and send it down. Whoops, Control Z. That's an example where you don't want to double click because it went all the way down to there. So I'm going to just drag it. And then I'm going to do my IRR. IRR can have cash flow at time 0 all the way down. So it's 11.98, somewhere right in there. Now what this tells us is, at that crossover rate, any time we have a required return less than this, this direction here, we're going with B. Any time that crossover rate of about 12%, if our required return is greater than that, then what are we going to do? We're going to go with A right there. All right, so the moral of story of the last two videos, mutually exclusive projects and non-conventional cash flows go with NPV, not IRR. In our next video, we will see 
something called a modified internal rate of return, which people use sometimes in situations like this because they like to get a percentage. All right, we'll see you next video.